Hello and welcome back to the Not So Fit Couple podcast with your hosts, Lucy Halden. And Benjamin Halden. Have Valentine's Day. I was just about to go in with that. Is it? But it won't be. Won't be when it <laughs> releases, be. but it is when we record. And Galentine's. Do What's they that? have it? What's that? Like, girls, <laughs> Valentine's. So all like, with all your girl mates, you wish them happy Galentine's. Sure, that that's, goes the same way for guys. What oh, would yours be called? The same, because <laughs> guys and girls, Galentine's could work both ways. ways. No, because it's gals. Galentine. Guyentine. Palentine. Pals. Lads. Bro in time. Lads in time. Bro in time's better. But no, you always, with your girl mates, you wish it. And then if you're single, I think you like celebrate Galentine's together. And it's a great time. Cool. But it won't be when this podcast goes live. We're actually not doing anything for Valentine's Day, are we? We've only just literally just flown back into the country. <laughs> we so. probably look like shit. <laughs> well, I think we look better than we probably... We had to it, functioning that, cognitively. It was one of those. Well, we got in at one a.m., didn't we? Mm -hmm. One a.m. One a.m. I'm not good with a one a.m. bedtime. It really throws my throws me off. People Scaling who rhythm. people who go, go to sleep at one a.m. There we are. People who go to sleep at one a.m. and wake up. And do you know people go to sleep at one a.m. is their normal bedtime? I need yeah, to be in bed by nine o'clock. Some people are night owls. I was even oh, listening to the latest episode with uh, Rory Sutherland on Chris's podcast the other day. He was talking about, he goes to bed like 12, half 12, one o'clock. What time does he get up though? He was speaking, uh, this is going completely off topic. I just was really interested in a chain of thought. And this is so random in buying houses. Yeah. Interesting. Do, how, what do you did mean? you listen to this, Carl? Yeah. So his, his contention is that people buy houses the wrong way. They buy houses like, I'm going to buy a house that is, uh, Close to a big school or, you know, cost 250000 as your max price. But then your perfect house might be, you know, it is close to a school, but the school kids don't walk that way. And it might be 260000 And just by setting a price at like 250000 is my max, you might miss out on, you know, some incredible houses. So he's saying he would, for him, being close to a pub is something that a lot of people would really hate. But for him, that's like a fucking dream come true because he loves a bevy. So... Yeah, he, he was basically saying, think about the the metrics of what most people think is the worst thing about a property in terms of location or things around it, like things that you wouldn't really want, but things that you personally could put up with. So a lot of people wouldn't want to live next to a railway station, but he said, I love trains, so I would love to live near a railway station. And I don't go to bed until half 12 anyway, so there's no trains that run that late, so it doesn't even bother me. So he says, think about the things that are worst, usually in terms of metrics for house prices and what people least want, and think about what you could put up with. What would I put up with? <clears throat> I could not put up with a train, I don't think. I think the noise, because we go to bed quite early, that would really bug me. We're, we're kind of just off the back of a road. That never bugs me. That doesn't... Because some people are like, oh my God, I can't. Like it needs to be, compl but that doesn't bug me at all. We're, we're very countryside. Like a athletics track. Most people would be like, God, I don't want to be there when all the, you know, whereas mm. for you, it's like. Oh my God. I'd be like, true. I run to the track. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay. Look at it in that way. That's really yeah, interesting. He, he's the funny one. He said was, I live next, I, I live close-ish to a school that is like a bum school, but that doesn't bother me because all my kids are 30 and they're not going to school. So that doesn't matter. I don't need to be close to a school, which is prestigious and does well yeah it's actually yeah the the athletic track 100 oh, percent. or if there was like a gym yeah. to be fair we have a gym <laughs> yeah that's a really interesting thought interesting sorry i just completely changed the topic there yeah and i have no idea what we were uh, i just want to say thank you to everyone for the amazing feedback from the tier episode i know everyone's been loving listening to that we if you haven't make well. sure to go back and tune in and give it a listen and if you have any of the guests that you would like to see on the podcast that we can make happen, please drop it in the comments because we'll do our very best to do so. Yeah, we, we definitely really do try. By the way, I think people can tell from when we did get... <laughs> Carl, <laughs> hey, the amount of emails we send to people. <laughs> God, I don't know. It, 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 it can be really hard because yeah. we <laughs> want to get the best guests possible on for you. So when we did get Tier on, that was like actually a really big moment for us because she's so big obviously in the fitness space and the CrossFit, CrossFit space, but just in general, it's like a very empowering person. Um, and we do appreciate how much you guys love that episode. So fingers crossed we can get more on. We do have two really, really cool guests next week when we're in London who are going to be absolutely incredible. But yeah, keep keep giving us ideas because we will honestly do our very, very best to get these people on. 
Oh, we've got another one that Kyle's lined up at the moment, which is amazing. I'm really excited about that yeah, one. But that'll well, we be can't, after, can't that'll after a honeymoon in America. Yeah, we're, we're going to America, guys, in... 12, 11 12, days. 12 days. Yeah. We've honestly... we The, the Lanzarote trip that we've just been on it, it was a working trip so my mum and dad were away and they asked if we wanted to go and obviously we said yes yeah. so we've just worked from there for two weeks no we didn't 10 days and then come back but we've actually got oh we've got a honeymoon in disney and then yeah <sighs> in florida actually and the little children come then we spoke about this on the podcast i don't know what you're about to say kittens. we're not pregnant the kittens oh oh no sorry i thought you were insinuating that i'm pregnant no. oh my god we're getting kittens have we th- spoke about this already? No, Cal, no. Cal, Ben, and no one, no. no one, no one knows we're getting them yet. But no, to be fair, Ben, Ben has never had a pet ever in his life, and that's that's sad to me. That Ben's never had a pet, and I've always wanted cats in this house, or like kittens and cats, because we've grown up with them, and my cats live with my parents. Ben has always been against it. When he used to go home, he's not against it. Just he used to not. He used to like, when my cat used to stroke Ben's leg, he used to kind of like move it away with his foot, and that used to make me really sad. So I thought Ben hates cats. Obviously, about a month ago, we were on the train to London. No, 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 no. It was it was about a month and a half ago. Ben on his laptop screen had kittens up on his thing, and I Top. went. A tab on a tab, and I went over to. It. I was like, "What's that?" And you really, you really like hush. You like what's fucking? It's just, we were just talking about because we had you rats or something. Oh no, no. Two weeks later in London, Lucy, do you want to get some kittens? I was going to get as a, as a surprise. <laughs> but that wouldn't that that well, wouldn't from, be a good surprise for me. Two cats. That would yeah, because you mm, because you can't just get one. You can't just well, get one. It'll I know only... a lot of people have one cat. No, I do. You get lonely. So we're getting two kittens and we pick them up in about a month. 30, co- 31 days to be specific. And we won't tell ta- 31 days. We won't tell you the names or what they are, but you will see. They're going to they're gonna be on the podcast. They will be. Actually, at some point, I'm yeah, just going to so have, fun. I'm going to do every episode holding one of the kittens, every single episode, and I'll alternate. You can have one and I'll have one. And then Kyle can maybe have them as well. I'm very excited about it. But I'm glad it wasn't a surprise because I would have been really stressed if you just suddenly turned That's a up. Surprise, right? yeah. If you just turned up with two kittens and I didn't have I've already got the litter tray, I've already got the food bowls. Yeah, we've not even the got the cats yet, and Lucy has literally decked the whole house out. If God knows what it's gonna be like when we actually have kids. That's well, you should probably already started planning for that as well, actually. No, 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 actually, but you do have that wouldn't I quite like small surprises, but whoa. If you just came back with two kittens, I'd be like, what, what the fuck do you want me to do with them? Like, where do you... Like, how... But I'm very excited about the kittens. Moving on. Mm-hmm. Do you want to read this out for me? I do. Go I on. thought you were going to do it straight away when, the, no, when, we, first, when we first entered the podcast. The fa- That word confuses me. The farthest distance in 24 hours, farmers carrying... Farmers carrying. Farmers carrying... 100 pound male is 54 kilometers, 33.55 miles, and was achieved by Ben Halden, UK, in Chester, Cheshire, UK, on 21st July 2023. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, why have they put. (laughs) (laughs) Why have they put farmers carrying? Is it not farmers carrying? That's how it's moved, isn't it? Your farmers carrying. The farthest distance. I also thought it was furthest distance. The farthest. I did say it to you a few times. The farthest distance. But Ben, look, get it, show, get it out. Show and tell. Guinness World Records. It is there nice. We go, guys. We finally have. This was a bigger. <gasps> You're officially amazing. Yeah. That's great. This was, a, this was a bigger <laughs> task to actually get the certificate through than it was to do the actual challenge itself. It's taken so long yeah. to get it verified by Guinness World Records. Did you think at one point it wasn't going to come through? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I did harass them a couple of times. Just be like, where is this up to in terms of the review? So. Yeah, we finally did it. And I just got a card through this morning from my November, which is really cool, being one of the, the, the top 10 fundraisers in the UK for 2023. And we've got the November uh, awards evening. Is it this month? Next month? This it's, month? yeah, it's next Thursday. Also, we have the Run Club on the Wednesday yeah, night. Yeah, so that is, uh, I think it's like some awards for one of the biggest fundraisers, whatever it is, or, or being doing something. Because one of my biggest goals was to try and empower more men, especially in 2024. And 
open more conversations up about men's mental health and just generally help more guys get on a positive track with whatever they're doing, both with their physical and their mental health. Uh, and that's a big, big thing oh. for me this year as well. So it's a really nice way to kickstart the year and being nominated for one of those awards in November. If you win, you'll have to do a speech. Yeah, that's fine. You should practice your speech now. Are you going to take the handles down to the awards? I don't know. I was thinking about it, but it might Cal. be quite difficult. That'd be fun. Though. So, but yeah, as Lucy was saying, then we're doing, we're going down to London to do that and we're doing a double podcast and we're doing a run club. Yeah. We do, we do, we're doing a lot. Can we say we're doing the run club with? If yeah, I've already, out. I've already, I've already shared the ticket link. So it's with myself, Ben, and Cassia Clark, and it's going to be incredible. It's in London. This is the first one of the no. This is the second one we've done in London. Mm -hmm. and it's really hard because we always want to do them everywhere for you guys, but you guys always request London. So we thought a really nice idea would be to be do to be do do sure. one that evening. <laughs> do you want to explain you where and the time of the event and stuff just so um, there are tickets left when this goes out which no be. Okay. I will just pop the ticket link below for okay. you because I don't want to share it and then you don't have a ticket and then everyone rocks up to yeah. where the start is um, it is in London it's in a very central location which is really easy to get to which is great and it's a 5k at a 6 minute per kilometre pace mm -hmm. it's a nice nice run steady run yeah nice steady run so yeah we'll leave the link below God, I mean I don't know if there'll be ticket. I mean, I don't know. I can't promise you. They usually sell out within the first hour. Yeah. So we will see, but that'll be very, very exciting. I'm going to kindly interrupt today's episode because it is sponsored by Graham's, the family dairy company. And we spoke about how hard it is in this day and age to have easy access to protein on the go. We have the world's busiest lives. We just do millennials, Gen Zs. And the fact you can just pick these up from literally any supermarket. You've got Asda, Sainsbury's, Tesco, Spa, Aldi, Lidl, Morrison's. You will have already seen it everywhere and anywhere. So this one, for example, that I was having today, 15 grams of protein. Look at that. You could literally just walk around, have it in two seconds, got your protein. 35 grams of protein that is more than a protein shake and that's incredible and it's delicious yeah i think the thing that i really like about this one delicious. is as well and i'll be carrying these around with me more often it's one yes it's 35 grams of protein but two it's the consistency of the drink itself it's a lot thicker than a protein shake it goes down a lot better it tastes a lot nicer and the most important thing it keeps you a lot fuller so you're going to snack less now as part of this uh, powered by Graham's is doing a 30 day challenge aimed at encouraging you to increase your protein intake post exercise. Graham's family dairy protein products are fat free, low sugar and sweetener free, making them the perfect on the go snack just to take with you pretty much anywhere. If you'd like to sign up to the free 30 day challenge, make sure that you visit www.grahamsfamilydairy.com forward slash powered which will give you access and tell you a lot more about the 30 day challenge. And all you need to do is add in your email address. So it really is that simple. And honestly, guys, we would not tell you how good they are and they would not be on this podcast if they weren't absolutely phenomenal. Just to remind you guys again, that URL is www.grahamsfamilydairy.com slash powered. Yeah. Back to today's episode. And can I, shall I go on to my, if you, oh, we oh, have yeah. a lot of questions. Yeah, well, one of the ones. I love it. I love all the, why are you tensing your biceps? Stretching and tensing. Double whammy. Same men can't multitask. Do you, one of the questions I had, and it was off the back of the whole day, really. It's actually a topic I've been thinking about a little bit when we were away. And it was around switching off from work whilst just not even being on holiday, just being able to switch off from work and constantly thinking about work or constantly thinking about a to-do list or things that you're in your mind or stressing about things that are coming up. And it's something that I struggle with. It's something that I struggle with whilst away as well. I was terrible. Because I don't, I don't stress when I am in work. I stress when I'm out of work mm. because I'm thinking about work and when I'm doing work, I'm not thinking about it. And what this then does, it makes it way harder to recover. It makes it harder to sleep. It makes your mood worse because you're just constantly, if not working, you're thinking about work and you feel like you're doing something important when actually the important thing is unplugging, stopping, switching off. And that's something that I, when we were away, struggled with still quite a lot as well even though we were flexible working that sometimes makes it more difficult for me because fle flexible working means 
I can carry on working anytime. There's no cut off time. There's no cut off date. There's no stopping. It's just constantly go. And then when I'm not doing the work, I'm worrying about doing the work. Mm. I'm stressing about doing the work. And that's the problem with flexi time for me, especially now in an age where you can answer the email, you can answer the message, you can get back to people, you can complete the to-do on the task because you've got a mobile phone. Mm. You are always contactable, contactable. You are always reachable and you're always able to, to get back to people whenever you need to. And that's the thing that I really struggled with switching off from when we were away because there's no physical boundary. There's nothing in place to stop it. Even at dinner times, I'd oh, quickly do a bit of work. I'd quickly finish that email. And it's still it's still something that I struggle with. It's something I don't want to do at all when I'm on the honeymoon because obviously this trip when we went away was to work, but I just extend that. When it when it's flexi time, that flexi time means to me just carry on doing. I agree though. I think we 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 just didn't it I did not stop thinking about work for ten I don't know if it's because we've got a lot a lot going on with the app and moving around and the podcast and then our own um socials and it's it's never it's never ending i kept going into these like states and you pulled me up on it a few times where i was editing a video on my phone or doing emails or just doing something on my phone and people would be talking to me and i was completely out of it because i was working or like there was no point where i didn't or i just kept get it was good because i kept getting really creative ideas but I wouldn't write the idea down and be like, oh, I'll do that tomorrow. I would literally start it straight away, wouldn't I? Like, I'd be like, I need, and it's like, I need to go and record this voiceover. I need to go and film this, or I need to go and do this email. It was so rational and intense because our job lives rent free in my head on a daily basis. And it's re it's actually really annoying. Like, it's so annoying how much my, my brain doesn't turn off. When I'm on a run, Take I've even done it at like, I get my phone out and I set myself reminders when I'm running. I'll be voice noting you too. I'll be voice noting so, and I'm like, oh my god, I literally can't switch off. And it's it's a really it's a really weird place to be. I think we do have quite good balance, but we've we already said January wasn't balanced. But the good thing about when we were away, we were away as a family, so not everyone was working and on their phones, and that helps switch off a little bit or just work in a slightly different location. Mm. But we, we pulled each other up on it and all four of us did actually with um, Meg and Jake as well because we all said, let's look at our screen time. As soon as I look at my screen time, I was I like, I'm putting sick. my phone away. Like I, it was so high. It was like five, five hours. Five hours, 41. Five hours, 41. And I was like, put it away, put it, bin it, throw it in the pot. Like I just, I felt physically sick that I was on my phone that much. When you add it up over the week. 35 hours a week. 35 fucking over hours. Over 35 hours, probably about 40 hours, which is a full-time job, by the way, on yeah. your phone. And it's really hard because we had really isn't deep that, conversations. Stop, isn't that that crazy? Yeah. I know it, I know it is our job, but that is a full-time job. Yeah. On your phone. We had really deep conversations, didn't we, about what is differentiated for us for work and non-work like I don't like scrolling I'm actually I don't really scroll often but I will because I now don't edit on final cut or kind of I just use my laptop for like I don't even know what I really use it for like it's just like like app stuff to be fair just app stuff whereas I use like I edit on cap cut I look at trends I do that I do all my emails on my phone so my screen time I can't differentiate what's I can't differentiate if that's work time or pleasure. Do you get, and I think that's a really hard thing. Like I might get a work phone. I think, then I'm I think like doing work. more stuff on your laptop again though helps create boundaries because you're creating a physical boundary that maybe phones not as work-based and the laptop's more for keeping work on. Mm. So doing the editing on for replying to the emails on. And even if you switch your emails off from your phone, if you wanted to, to do that. That it's, would stress me out. I know, but it'd be a good thing to like long term to probably probably do. Um, but t yeah. tips for getting away from the stress of work if you feel like you're unbalanced or you can't stop thinking about work. I wrote a couple down and one of the big ones for me, and I did this a couple of times when we were on holiday and I do this with my, my phone in the morning for my alarm is to go and plug it in. Go and plug it into a wall because then your your mobile phone essentially becomes like an old house telephone. It's on a wire 
and you're not going to stand just next to the plug mm. aimlessly scrolling through your phone. It's uncomfortable. It's unorthodox. So leaving it on charge as much as possible is actually a really good tactic to keep you away from the doom scroll, from replying to emails, from stressing out about contacts or being always contactable on WhatsApp. The other thing is having some kind of physical notebook or something that you can write ideas mm -hmm. down in. Because if you're thinking about something, the easy way to take that stress away from your mind is to dump it on paper and then you can address it tomorrow then. It's on a to-do list to sort tomorrow. You can forget about it today. Really, really easy one. The, the other one where you wouldn't, I, this is the only time I never think about work. I know that you do it when running, but exercising or when in the gym, I, I do actually switch off. I don't. So I like to use that time because I've, I've made it a priority to control that time, which is like when I said to you before, stop doing stuff on your phone when you're in the gym. Mm. You need to, you need to prioritize that really important time of exercise to break up away from anything else in the day. I mean, I mean, you can, we spoke about the five minute rule when we we're on holiday, which is where if something, a task can be done in five minutes, do it, just, just get out of the way and do it. And you're not thinking about it. But if it takes longer than that, then write it down and do it tomorrow. I think what's really hard, that's what I really struggle with when I'm running or gymming or training, because it's such a pivotal part of what we do. And my brain goes into over, overdrive. Like in one session, I could film five videos. And it's like my brain can't just enjoy the session, which is why I also think it's, I enjoy going to big group, like high, high rocks, hybrid classes, because I can't, I don't have my phone on me and I have to just fully train. Whereas when I'm training by myself, I'm like, oh, there's an idea. Oh, I'll, like, it's really bad and I can't, I can't get away from it. It's like, there's always something to film. There's always content to create. There's always this, there's always that. Like I just, oh. Whereas with content stuff, I yours is slightly different. I don't you enjoy. I don't actually in enjoy it as much. So I will write things down a piece of content that I need to film, and then when I'm training, I'm just training. Mm, I don't I really, I don't really like vlogging because I th feel like it takes over my life, which is why I stopped doing it. I don't do a lot of the bits of content where I'm just like filming workouts and stuff anymore. I just tend to enjoy my workout. If anything, content-wise, it's usually planned or to do with the podcast. And that does definitely help me just be more present because the whole reason why we're discussing this topic at the moment is to be more present and be less stressed. Mm. And it's it's finding out ways that you can not be worrying about the future or regret in the past and live in the now. We have very different content styles though. I'm not, like saying, I'm not is, saying one's right or yeah. wrong. I'm just saying that for me, it's helped me be less stressed. And I understand when you've got a certain style or you're living a certain way or recording and showing your life, it's going to be difficult to get that balance. I understand that. Yeah, it's just a really weird thing, isn't it? I think I don't think people even realize, like mine's, mine pushes on like mild OCD, which I've already got, I already had ages ago anyway, but it almost like, it, like I will film something in that session because even Cal can vouch for this. And then I've edited five videos within within an hour. Like I'm I'm done. Like I'm just, and then I think, oh, okay. But then I do the exact same thing the next day. And I've got so much content backed up that I don't even use because it comes obsolete because I filmed it so long ago. It's just an idea at the time. But I think the notepad thing is really good for me because I remember that one session, do you remember I took a notepad into the gym with me? I think I left my phone in the house because it was the music um, for the for the gym in the garage. And that was really good. And when I had an idea, I'd write it in the notepad. Mm -hmm. And I actually produced a really, really good piece of content from it because it was just my brain couldn't switch off. But I was like writing it down in the notepad and the phone was in the house. But he, so the, I think one of the big things is a lot of people now work from home as well. Uh, so yeah. it, it's there's no physical boundary between office space and home space and for people who work at home there's, there's there's things that you can do to make sure that you sort of change that environment whether that's once you've clocked off is putting some kind of relaxing music on listen to some music that you enjoy to change the feeling of your home it could be getting changed into a different outfit that you've been working in all day to make sure that again you're creating some kind of physical differentiation between your work clothes and your like slobby or gym clothes whatever it may be there's there's a few things that you can do in terms of making sure that you create some sort of boundaries if you are somebody who works from home which can be 
can be really difficult. Well, this is what we started doing. All three of us used to work in the kitchen. I was like, nah, we, 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 we're nipping this in the bud. Mm. If we're working and we're on laptops or even even working on your phone, you come upstairs and you sit in the office. You do not do it in any other area of the house, even though sometimes it's really comfy to do it from like the lounge or, but then the whole house feels like a work environment. Whereas since we switched doing that, it's great because the office is the work space. What about you, Carl? Because you, you obviously work from home quite often as well. Yeah. I've... Hello. Hello, you've got me. Um, yeah, I used to find that I would rock out of bed in kind of my PJs uh, or at least put on like comfy clothes once I've woken up and actually not slept in PJs. Um, and then I'd just do my work in like, you know, joggers and t-shirts or whatever. And then I would go to the gym in joggers and t-shirt and I'd find that I'd always just be in total slob mentality. Yeah. So I used to, there were days where I'd, I'd wake up, I'd put on, you know, nice pair of trousers, you know, fresh socks, fresh underwear, whatever, and work in like actual clothes. Mm. And that I think really helped my mentality of like, I'm working and because, you know, the work we do is quite informal. So I can just work in like, mm -hmm. you know, joggers and hoodies and active wear, but no, it's quite nice to mix it up mm. and dress like a real humor for once. I found that my screen time was getting really out of hand recently. And I've tried to like nail that on and just get away from that and not be watching a movie in the evening and like on my screen or like on my phone. At the same yeah, time. double, so double screen. I think what you do though quite a lot is you watch YouTube things um, on your phone when you're doing stuff. So that probably yeah, increases yeah, yeah. your phone time, uh, screen time quite a lot. Definitely. Even if you're not scrolling. Yeah, you know creative I mean? stuff. Like if I'm editing like 300 photos, mm. I can just like do that mindlessly and, yeah. you know, watch like podcasts or whatever at the same time. But yeah. Need to get it, need to get it fixed. Yeah, and again, that 35 hours, 40 hours that you spend doing that, obviously it's part of a job. Imagine 30 years ago, you would have, where would that 40, 35 hours have gone? Yeah, I just did a, a quick little bit of maths there that if, you, if you're on your phone five hours a day, every day, that's 12 and a half years. <gasps> Been it. I know, 12 and a half years. That's assuming you've got 60 years left to live, which is quite nice. I sometimes, you know, and it's really rogue. I have this thought process a lot. A lot. Sometimes I think about just packing it all up and moving to Nepal. That's rogue. But that is sometimes what I think. You know, when life gets like so that, what we just spoke about, I sometimes just think about packing a bag <laughs> with my rucksack and just living wildly. Nomadically. Have you heard about the Mexican fisherman story? <laughs> yeah. Ben's, Ben's probably got a good explanation of that one for you, Liz. Do you want me to tell it again? I do. We need to tell everybody because I've Yeah, I think Chris Chris told us a few times. Chris who, sorry? Chris Williamson uh, on his podcast. But it was, it was I think it was originally put up on a thread on LinkedIn or Twitter by someone ages ago. I'll try and tell the best that I can. I'm sure I've told it before. There was... Once was a... Sorry, I guess like you were going into a song. Which song was he going to sing? I don't know. There once was a... There <laughs> was a Mexican fisherman. Yes. In Mexico, funnily enough. Mm hmm who was out one day fishing and an American businessman came over to him with a pitch. Like a pitch fork or like a pitch deck. I need to understand deck. the full story. Deck. deck. And he pitched him the idea of that he could increase the volume of fish that you catch each day by increasing the amount of fishing boats that he had. So he said, if we can double the amount of boats that you currently have, you have two boats, then we can catch more fish. You can sell more fish in the village and you can make more money. And then with that money, we can eventually then get a fleet of boats to go out and catch more fish, bring in loads more fish and sell a ton more and increase again. And then from that, we could get an office in New York and then we could set up fleets of boats in different ports and then sell the fish and bring in more finances. And each time the fisherman said, and then what? And that was, well, then we can sell equity in the company and we can bring in more money and we can expand the fleet further. And the Mexican fisherman said, and then what? And he said, well, then eventually we can sell the business and you can just sit on a beach in Mexico, and catch fish. And the Mexican fisherman said, exactly. He's already doing it. He's already doing the thing that is at the end of the rainbow. Beautifully told. 
I was beautifully. I felt like I was being a bedtime story. Then. Cal, <laughs> I was really going into like another. I'm gonna have request bedtime stories every so night. The, that was the, wonderful. The, the purpose of the story is that a lot of the time we're working towards something which requires money or time or for you to get better at doing something. But the thing that you're giving up your time for, you could already have. Mm. You could already have that happiness, that thing that makes you happy without giving up or sacrificing everything to do so. Not always, but it's it's something to think about. If, again, like, I was thinking the other day, I was actually driving my car back from the gym and I thought when we reach the end point of whatever we're looking to do and whatever we're looking to achieve or, or later in life, do what I'd love to do? I'd love to be a postman. I'd love to just <laughs> walk around. I've got, I've not got massive responsibilities. I mean, I'm sure working for Royal Mail can be stressful, but I'd love to just go and deliver letters, speak to the odd old person every now and again when I go and deliver them, get a load of steps in the in the day, and obviously be great doing it in the summer. But even if it pissed down, I don't think I'd be too pissed off about it. I'd get to be in the outdoors, I get to walk around, not a huge amount of responsibility, and just deliver letters and boxes. I mean, you probably will do that one day. Then, if you want to do it, why would you not? I always feel this way when I see people in London who have like really bad like lifestyle creep. So you know they're living in London, they're paying three, four thousand pounds a month on their mortgage, and then they're you know they're buy they've got like the latest Tesla, which is costing them or like you know a BMW or some crazy Porsche, costing them a thousand pounds a month, and they've basically got no money at the end of the month, and they're just absolutely grafting their ass off in some horrible office making you know, really, really good mm. money on paper, but spending it all to like maintain this lifestyle. It's like, are you happy? Like there are people in, you know, Indonesia mm -hmm. who've got more disposable income than you do because you've just spuffed it all on trying to appear and like keeping up appearances and stuff. Yeah. Strange. Well that, I yeah, this is why like that Nepal thing really sits like strongly because you could like, it's just so like, it's like breathing out, yeah. calm, very, very, very happy, thankful, fortunate people and it's a very it's really interesting isn't it just like thinking about all these sort of things on the flip side though i love work do you know what i mean i i actually oh, yeah, love, I actually love so doing much. it there's a reason why i do it so often is because i actually love what we do and this is the other other side to what we've been speaking about is if you really love doing something then don't let society tell you that you shouldn't because sometimes the reason why you feel stressed out about it or the reason why you feel like you shouldn't be doing it is because other people or societal norms are telling you, oh, that's not normal to do. But mm -hmm. the thing that you love is doing that, then that's absolutely fine as well. We're just talking about balance. And if you find yourself getting burnt out because we do it sometimes and we're not perfect, it's just about finding, even if you're doing something that you love, is creating some space or some time to recharge so that you can continue to do what you love and do it at maximum capacity. Mm. Yeah, no, I have, uh, what it's what we do is we're we're so passionate about it like the passion we have for what we do is unbelievable even down to things now which i never thought i'd be passionate about which is so weird but even the nitty gritty like working side by side with cal and like designing an app screen i'm like i'm like whoa like it, it, it interests me so much like how it looks how it works the creators the functionality like when you when you dive into it is that something you've picked up on as well Cal? like you know the actual process of bringing i guess like the app to life that no one else sees yeah for sure i found it extremely interesting and like i didn't go to school for app design you know? <laughs> Cal, <laughs> like, what, Cal, what did what did you do in i did zoology i was studying ants and <laughs> Ants and birds at university <laughs> and jellyfish. Yeah, but no, like uh, I find it so interesting. Um, and yeah, it's nice to have something that's kind of like it's got our fingerprints all over it mm. out in the world um, that people are like using and interacting with on a daily basis. But yeah, yeah. No, it's really nice. I, and that's something I, oh gosh. Well, I can tell you love it as well, Luke. I just, I think it's really yeah. like as soon as something new's happened, I'm like, can you show me, can, can I see, like, can I see what it looks like? Like, how does it work and show me? And, and obviously we get stuff wrong and we get stuff right and it's just, I think it's a really interesting space to be. So even though I'm very passionate about fitness and health and helping people, the actual things behind the scenes that go into the the work, of it, like the business side and the, like graphics and things, it, I just, yeah, I find it really interesting. I really like it a lot. I think that's the best part of our job for sure. It's just a variety. Yeah, I do. It's a complete variety of everything we do every day. Which is why 
we end up working 24 7 because <laughs> there's I so think, much to I do think also we often talk about <laughs> negative comments but we get so many great comments from people who whose lives we've been able to impact whose journeys we've been able to be a part of and how happy and thankful people are for being a part of the my coach community which is just beyond anything gives me great pride mm. and makes me happy about anything else so that is just like getting those kind of comments back from people who have genuinely changed their lives is is great yeah because there's, there's always going to be so many negative comments on social media there's not though is that there's just the ones that we pick up on and we tend to focus on those over anything else a football stadium thing yeah oh well yeah i just meant in general not at just at our things even just sometimes you know when you go you like the, I follow some random pages, but like something from Lad Bible or something called New York Post and they post the weird, wildest stuff that's happening in the world. And you click on something and you just have a bit of scroll through the comments. And I'm thinking, how, how are people so like negative online? Like some of the things they say, I'm just thinking, how is that coming out your mouth? And you're, you're typing it and commenting on someone's post. It's really weird behavior to me. Like what? very odd behavior that I just, I can't, like if you think that, fine. Think it. Why do you have to voice that? They're like, but it's just my opinion. Because it makes them feel better. Yeah. But they always go, like, oh, it's just my opinion. I'm thinking, that's great. But your opinion is just like vulgar and rogue and just keep it in your brain sometimes. But the people, the, the thing with people mm, is, it's it's just, like with everything, unfortunately, is there's got to be an arsehole. There's got to be shit's got to come out of somewhere. <laughs> and they're those people. Do you know the, the ones that I always get on recently is the videos with Jack? I've done oh, a few with him now these, yeah. and it's yeah, really annoying that he gets, uh, there's a lot of support for him, but a lot of the videos I've done with him, he gets a lot of shit on the videos and it's because he's actually choosing to do something with himself. Yeah. And there's, there's comments like, he, oh, he's just so awkward and like, he's so, so weird and like, why can't I just this? Why, if he's happy, why does it matter to you? Yeah. And also he's a, he's a lovely, great guy. Yeah. Why are people so, obs that people do are obsessed with with like pulling him just down. Just for reference, he's a slim, skinny guy who uh, I've done a couple of videos with and YouTube videos with him. I'm helping with it, helping him with some coaching stuff as well and trying to bulk up and improve his his, his own self and his own self-confidence. Uh, a little bit like I did a video with Nathan, who's another guy, slightly mm. different journey, journey where we did a, a cut down. Um, but yeah, that's just packaging parts of it. Um, so you can check those out there on my YouTube or the TikTok as well. Sort of plug. Yeah. Um, but yeah, get get behind people. Do you know what I mean? That's what the fitness space is about. Even if people at the start are doing things that you deem as wrong or a, a bit incorrect or whatever, people start the journey as, as somewhere. Do you know what I mean? You don't get into the car for the first time and do a three point turn or reverse park perfectly. You get bumps and knocks along the way, and you slowly learn as you you fail and move forward. And with guidance from the right people and the support from the right people, you'll get there. But just on this. Turn off from work thing. One of the big things for me, and I've spoken about this before, is the unscheduled sheet. Uh, I will try and find this link to send to people and put it in the, the podcast notes. Sorry, Carl, no, it's asking me to bring that up, but it's it's called the unscheduled sheet. There's actually a book on it. I think it's a product productivity book, and it taught me a lot about prioritizing. So what You've you not do? Used that in a while. I've not. I, but I might I might put it back in again. It's like habits when you stop using anything or stop doing anything. But I still do, although I don't use the sheet, I use the tool or the methodology within my diary because what you do is you put in your diary the things that you want to do. So just like with the Mexican fisherman, what you're basically doing is what is the end point that I want to get to or do today or what are the things I actually want to do that I'm working towards and I put those in first. So it might be go to the cinema with Lucy. It might be go for a walk. It might be go and see my mum and dad this weekend. It might be go and play golf with the lads. I don't know, whatever it is, that goes in there at 2 p.m. or whatever time it is, and then the work goes in before it, and no work can take place whilst you're doing that. So all the work's got to be done prior to that point. And do you know what will happen if you actually put a time cap on it? You'll get the same amount of work done that you would have been spent doing all day before you go and do that. And also, it's a real simple psychology method of positive reinforcement you're reinforcing the behaviors and the work that you've just done by doing something you actually want to do so it's called the unscheduled sheet instead of putting all your work in and then the things that you want to do you put all the things that you want to do and then the work in around it really useful tool yeah it's a brilliant tool i don't use it as much um but for you honestly it worked wonders mm -hmm. it worked wonders for your procrastination or if you felt like you had to do this or had to do that and 
yeah, it was really good. Yeah, even if you want to play G- GTA or go on the computer or whatever it is, you can put time for that in your diary and just work before it and get yeah. it boxed off. Yeah. I had an interesting... It's not actually an interesting question. It's more so just something that I actually don't know the answer to for either of us. Go on. <laughs> what is your weirdest trait or habit? Weirdest trait or habit? This is probably something that you will pick up on for each other rather than really... Well, that's what so. I was trying to think. What, what is your weirdest trait? What do you do that's like weird? You probably know better than I do. I know, I'm I'm speaking, my brain's speaking out loud. I don't think I have that many weird habits. Disagree. Kyle, what's one of my weird <laughs> habits? No. I or mean, a trait? The names of things, right? Yeah. <gasps> Jesus Christ. Christ. That, that is the best. Dictionary. That is the best. That is a weird trait. Oh, no, maybe that's a weird habit. Is that a habit or a trait? I think that's actually a trait because it's, it's part of who I am. Meg does it as well though. Have you noticed how similar me yeah. me and Meg speak in a very, very similar way? I like changing words and then Cal and Ben also do it as well now. Yeah. Like blub. You, do, you don't do it as often anymore, but I hate the baby voice. I don't do the baby voice. You don't do it anymore. I don't think I've ever done the baby voice. I did it voice. a few times. I had to pull pull that one up. A few times. I've probably I, I, done I don't it. like it when anyone does it. I've probably done it three times and Ben has remembered in our six, seven year relationship that I've done it three times. It's one of the things that goes through me like chalk on a blackboard. Yeah, I don't like it either. Well, you, I will be talking to the kittens. And... No. <sighs> I, you can't. Look at the... I do baby voice the dog. Yeah, yeah. you will. Do... I can't do what Cal can't wait for. When Ben does yeah. his first no. baby voice to our kittens. Can, yeah, I will. Thank you. I will jump Head first into a concrete slab. No, you won't. Yes. Oh, no. I've got a weird habit of Ben's. Go on, please tell me. Taking one bite out of something and then putting, putting it, it back, back in the cupboard. Yeah. That is a weird yeah. habit. The amount of times I've gone to like, okay, for people who don't know, Have a taste. Ben Lucy is incredible because Thank you. the amount of like protein bars Snacks. that Ben Lucy get is amazing. However, you go to the cupboard, you pick one out, <laughs> bite gone. Jaffa cake, bite gone. Cheese from the cupboard, bite gone. It's so weird. Yeah. That's a really weird habit you've got, isn't it? Picking stuff up and putting I'm nibble, it back. I'm a nibbler. He's a big, a big time nibbler. Yeah. I've done it a few times. Probably or, I just or, do it sometimes because I don't, I don't want to eat a whole thing. I'll just like, I'll have a taste. And I'll probably go back to it in another day and I'll have another taste. Do you know what's a really bad habit? This isn't a weird habit, a bad habit of mine. I don't share food. And we picked mm. up on this. On holiday. On holiday. Mm. I openly, I'm not, like I'm not, I'm not trying to hide the fact I don't enjoy sharing food. Like something, You're, you've got the characteristics happens. of an only child. Interesting. No, you don't share a lot. Oh, I'll, I'll share anything else: clothes, shoes, anything. Share food. No, like I don't know what it is in me. I I really don't enjoy sharing food, and I don't know why. And I wish I did, but here we are. I'm the opposite. Ben's a big sharer. That's not with, the, not with so. the protein That's bars. That's the only thing not. though, because protein bars are tiny, but I always but offer I you. I'll even offer you first. Or I actually enjoy offering it to you because I like, do you know when you're like, oh, I'll tell you this dead nice. Do you know, so you can get a, a validation of the thing that you're having is nice to offer to someone else. That's me. Yeah. Do you know what you do as I well don't have then? that. You'll buy, like we'll be in a shop and we'll see like a, a random variation of something and I'll walk out and you'll have bought it for everyone to try. Yeah. No, no, like no, you'll see no, a protein bar. No, no, no. Sorry, I'm going to stop you right there. Okay, he's not boy for everyone to try. <laughs> he's boy for himself to try. How have I, I ever given it to other people? I think it's for the team. Okay, no, yeah. he is boy for himself to try. If you're giving it to other people at least, <laughs> just because you're an absolute minge bag, don't try and put your yeah. own ethos off on everyone else. No, but the sharing thing, we picked up on it on holiday because I just, I don't know if it's maybe like how big Ben's mouth is. So say if you what? have like a bar. Why am I getting criticised everywhere, yeah? No, no, say if you had a bar. And I share it with Ben, or I've done it in the past, and then he I, he takes half, and I'm thinking. No, I do not. You are a liar because when you <laughs> offer something that, to me, if, if I left. ever get a bite of anything, it's literally the cor- <laughs> the corner with you know when you have a sandwich, it's just I bread. I hold it like that. Else in it. <laughs> I hold it on the end. <laughs> it's just like I think it must. Maybe it's from past experiences where I've shared food with people, and instead of taking an appropriate bite, like if say you had a croissant. They eat half your fucking croissant. I'm thinking you may as well have it. And I'll go and buy another one. I rather do. You know what I rather do. I rather buy two and then just give buy you the whole then. thing. Buy two. I'll do that. I'll buy. I will solution. do that. I'm all right with meals. Meals, I'm okay with. If I'm like, do you want to try a bit of my spaghetti? Yeah. 
because you've got a massive when it, I think it's more of like sharing a sharing a small snack that you really you really fucking excited about this snack and then someone comes in and bites half and I'm thinking no one does that though and I, you're I'm the only person you share stuff with and I never do that so you just Share creating excuses snack. now for why you're not sharing. Well, I'm just being open that I just don't really enjoy What happened when we were on the plane yesterday? I don't know. What happened on the plane? So I went over and sat by Meg and stuff on, and Jake on the plane and they had like some sweets and stuff. I got the sick bag out of the thing and filled the whole bag with sweets and brought them back for you. That was nice. That's very cute. That was nice. You were sharing their food for me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Point aside, that's um just go, just a going back habit. to the topic we were speaking about before because actually like the uh, although it was just this podcast just kind of flowed into a how do you turn off from work stuff. Uh, there's a question that I've had and it's favorite books that aren't self improvement, which is also interesting on the topic of this podcast because I think you can get carried away and I definitely do in the whole self development world and only reading to self develop, which mm. I think it's important to consume things that aren't just always trying to show up in the sword because you just get if you just constantly consume 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 how do you ever implement or action when you're taking in so many different things so many people have bookshelves full of self-development books and will just read them for the sake of reading them mm -hmm. and never action anything this is why i always say your best reading five books and reread them and action the same stuff that's why i've read the essentialism book three times because better for me to take in the same information that i actually believe in and think is valuable rather than just continuing to read and spiel through a load of different books and i think fiction books is a great way for you to switch off from those kind of things and to be taken away into a different world and away from the real world where you can be away and not thinking about work because like Mo Gal that said you can't be happy and unhappy at the same time. So if you're in a fiction book and in a different world in a story, you can't be thinking about the stresses of work that you've got on. Well, I honestly agree with that so much with the book thing because where were we? I think I was in Portugal with Lauren and she was reading a book by Colleen Hoover and she wouldn't put this book down. I was like, I really want to read that book. I read it in two days. I then read the second one in like three days and I was finding that instead of like scrolling or going on my phone or picking the book up or learn thinking that oh, I need self, I need to we need need to read a business book or a self development book because I do enjoy them a lot. Like I really love the the business and um, mindset books. I could not put these books down. It was getting me up at six o'clock in the morning so I could read what was next and what was happening in my book because they were so exciting. And I'm going to order two more for America by the same author because I do really like it. So I'm not. Because I was going to take my Do Hard Things book that I've nearly finished now, but there's no... What's that like, wanna... sorry? It's great. The Do Hard Things. I think it's by Steve Madder. Madder? That's the one that I bought you for Christmas. Really good. Uh, like, in a, really in good a nutshell, book. what's the... It's, I think the overarching thing is talking about toughness and how to be your most authentic self without ego. Okay. Is, is basically the general... And like building inner confidence that not a lot of people talk about. But that is a really good book. But instead of taking that to America, because my brain's always ticking over, always. If I'm reading a business book, I get so many ideas. I do actually have a little notepad for that. So is, but, that, is that your favorite book that isn't self-development? No. Okay, what's your favorite one? My favorite non-self-development book? Yeah. Because Do Hard Things is self-development. Um, it ends with us. Or Verity. Who are they by? Colleen Hoover. Okay, yeah, that's what I meant. Is that your favourite non-fiction book? Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, just favourite author, Colleen Hoover. She's done some really, they're kind of weird rom-com um, with a twist. Mm -hmm. I love them. I think I, I dive into the characters and I just, I imagine what they are and it's, I really get lost in a book. I could read it in a day. Carl? What's that, my favourite non-fiction book? Yeah. Um... I don't know. Uh, probably Killing Commendatory by Murakami. That's a really good. I'm currently reading Lord of the Rings, actually. Really, oh, yeah, that's sick. Yeah, reading The Fellowship at the minute. Well, have you done, read that before? Cal. I read it when I was like 10, 11, but Me I, too. I think a lot of it went over my head. <laughs> yeah. And I like skip chapters and stuff. So I want that's to a really good idea, that. I think I could probably do that because I imagine, mm. like, with the Harry Potter books, there's a lot in there that is missed in the movies just because it's so long. Yeah, I saw a girl actually freaking out about the first time um, she was reading Goblet of Fire for the first time. And uh, I think. She started crying her eyes out because Ron and Harry oh. weren't friends. <laughs> it was very cute. Um, 
But yeah, no, I, my fiance Andrea reads books like an absolute yeah, yeah she's, train. she's on her thirteenth book this year. That's mental. No joke. That's and insane. Like fiction. Yeah, fiction. Yeah. There she flies through. There's um, there's a series called Akatar, A Court of Thorn and Roses, and she's like, yeah, fully obsessed with it. Yeah, my, my guilty admission is that I don't think I've read a fiction book since Harry Potter. And how old were you? Years ago. That's that. That's mm. one of my issues that I I do just generally read self development books. Not always in business. Sometimes with with, with mindset or happiness or mm. purpose. Or I, I've 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 read quite a few on psychology as well because I'm interested in that because I did it at uni. But yeah, I, I mean I was I'm telling people about reading fiction books and getting carried away in the world, but I don't do it. I tend to watch a lot of movies. Um which isn't um, the same yeah. which isn't the same as reading fiction books. I I will probably try and take a fiction book with us on our honeymoon because I don't want to do work stuff. Uh, and I feel like self development might be playing into that. So I will I will make this pledge on the podcast. You have my word that I will take a fiction book to America. But I mean, there's only a couple of days where we end up actually having a bit of downtime on these sort of holidays because we're doing so much. But I guarantee I will get through one of those books in two days because I can't put it down. And again, this is one of those things with the work thing which about switching off is, do you know what I sometimes think when I'm reading a fiction book? Mm. This is a waste of time. Yeah, no, it's Because, not. no, I know, I know. But this is my. This is my. You only have those two different things and yeah. the, the, the the two different voices. It's like oh, you, Ben. You could be learning or, or progressing in this time. But it, there's like we spoke about before. Sometimes there's more important things that you would get from the switch off and the change and the creativity mm -hmm. from doing that. But it's, it's battling that inner voice for me sometimes. Yeah. No. I I really really rate reading something that just takes you away from everything. And also, what's really important, and people don't even think about it, you can't be on your phone you cannot be on your phone if you're so absorbed in your fiction book oh my god you're just the phone's not irrelevant mm. put it in the house and go hand and seek play hand and seek with it fucking hell you just don't even care where it is and it's such a nice feeling to just i'm gonna order a couple more books by colleen hoover and i'm gonna just start i'm gonna start this afternoon audio books don't i don't love an audio book i love an audio book no. stop for me yeah Please. i don't i don't really no. audio book I can't remember. I can't. I forget like what's a really happened. Podcast, they're great. Yeah, I, I mean, I would probably enjoy them. It's just you mm. know, it's a habit that I've never got into uh, because if I'm if I'm going on a run or something, I will listen to a podcast. But I I, I think I'd probably enjoy the books. I've listened to a couple. Listen to uh, using my favorite ones. So I listened to a couple of Mark Manson ones, and I've listened to the Goggins one, which was quite good because he narrated it as well. Yeah, no, there's some really good ones out there. Saying that though, actually, I really with you two the other day, this new app that I found called Headway. Yeah, it's cool. That is actually, this is not an ad either, by the way. I honestly, oh my God, my my daily streak's on zero, Cal, because I didn't do it another way. It's um, it's basically, I don't know if you can see, it's loads of books and you kind of, you fill in a questionnaire thing at the start, you, you say what you like and what you're interested in. I would use an app sort of thing like this for business and self-development. Like I wouldn't want a summary of a fictional book. I'd want to read the whole thing. But you can basically click on it and you have like a library and you have saved books and you have like gibbets and stuff like that. And it comes up like this and you can either read through it or you can listen to it in Audible. And I think it's done through AI because the voices do sound a little bit rogue. That's the only thing I'd pick, yeah. up, pick up on, like the voices are, but there's obviously thousands of books, so it'd be impossible. And it breaks the book down into like 10 minutes. And for me, for some self-help, motivation, mindset, whatever you want to call them, books... I think that's really clever. So it's called Headway. If anyone wants to use it and feel sometimes to get a bit overwhelmed with how many self-help books or motivational books there are out there, I think it's a really good thing. And you have daily streaks. Talking so self-help. Break your streak. Mm. I've got to leave. Oh, Ben has Fizzy Ho. Physio. What time is your physio, Ben? Uh, it is in an hour. Um, oh. I've, got, I've had one question that I think would be really good if we could quickly answer it. Do you mind if we quickly... Yep. I could do it by myself if you need to leave. Shall I... Mean, I it is, it is a question. Go on, just start in. Okay. Uh, the question came through anonymously and it says, I really fancy this guy at my gym. How do I make a move without looking like a complete weirdo? I think you can actually, I think definitely just start a normal conversation. Like, hey, how are you? What's your, I've seen you in here a few times. Thank you. Oh, no, you can tell you've not been in the dating game for a while. I've seen you in here a few times. That's creep mode. I've been watching you. Oh, yeah, that is creepy, actually. That is really creepy. That's really creepy. I wouldn't say... No, I'm also meant... 
I actually don't know because I've not been in the dating scene for like seven years. I um, think it's, I think it's, 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 it's maybe it's don't more, do it mid set. It's usually a guy's kind of um, place traditionally, isn't it, to to make the move. So maybe even just being in the vicinity a little bit more and being being seen by him first is probably the first. I think she's already there. Then you can probably okay. Um, I think smile. I think smizing. If Smiling want, with the eyes is a really, if someone does it back to you, we used to do it all the time when we first, yeah. when we weren't a thing, but we were a thing. Like you kind of smize at each other and then they're giving it back. You think, do you know what? This is great. Don't do it whilst they're mid-set. I'd just go up to them and be like, hey, I wouldn't know what to do. If, if, you, if you want to be subtle about it, you can probably ask about like how many working sets have you got left on that or if you can work in and that's a really easy conversation starter. Um, because that's what you're looking for really, aren't you? You're just looking for the the intro to be able to chat to someone and speak to someone. And that's probably ne- a really easy way in. Um, and I know that probably... Requ- Why is it I've seen you in here a few times? I think that's quite pleasant. Okay. Like I've, but like, I don't hate that one. I but like pleasantly okay. being like, oh, I've seen you in here like a few times. What do you do? I don't know what would be next. Can like, what do you... Sorry, problem. yeah. Uh, that's a really easy way in an intro to speak mm. to someone. Um, yeah, you throw my foot off now. Sorry. It was just about... What I, what I meant was just doing it in a nice way without sounding. I don't think that's creepy. I don't think that's creepy saying like that. But yeah, yours is probably easier by saying how many sets have you got left. I think it's interesting Can that I girls in? asking this. I think normally if a guy was to go up to a girl and ask them in the gym, it might come off as a bit creepy. This is this yeah. is this is why I'd I'd encourage people to do it because how does people think your mum and dad met and everyone else met? Everyone else thought someone else was good looking or beautiful or sexy or whatever it is and then they approach them this is how interactions start and if people want to pretend like this doesn't happen and that everyone's a creep then that's the world that you can live in but for everyone else who wants Mm -hmm. to try and find a partner or wants to give it a go just get outside the comfort zone do something there's actually some like i can't remember who made the plan or the challenge it's like a 50 day challenge where every single day you've got to do something that embarrasses you or really challenges you and one of them by someone was I think going in, it might have even been James who spoke about this, about going in and next time you order Starbucks, just say when you get to the till, can I have this for free? Like they'll pro- they'll probably say no, but it's about getting knocked back or challenge yourself to be embarrassed every single day. So that could be one of your challenges that even if you're embarrassed, just go and do it because at the end of the day, all someone's going to say is no, but the benefits that come from it could be a lot bigger. To be fair, Mm. coming from somebody who was very stressed out to speak to somebody at a gym that led to this incredible job that I now have, chatting to people in the gym is nerve-wracking as shit, but very, very good. For clarification, uh, yeah, I didn't... uh, Basically, the job that I work now with Ben and Lucy all came about for me just randomly asking if I could take pictures (laughs) of them one day in the gym. I found those pictures, you know, when you're on an aeroplane and all you do is look through your phone. (laughs) They're They're actually really good, Carl. Like, I I think they're really nice. But yeah, the only thing I'd say with going up to someone in the gym, wait till they finish their session, I think, because then if it goes kind of wrong midway through, then you're then like awkward the whole rest of the session. Kind How of just can make... you know when they're finishing the session? When they've got the bag and they're getting ready yeah, to... Yeah, they're gone. That's a bad, bad news. Though. I wouldn't do it mid, like mid set though then. Just like wait and like make sure they're just like not mid squatting or mid pressing or got done. No, no, don't I mean, pull I'm that sure... face because it happens. Okay, I've it never does seen happen. Do that. So just like wait until people are looking like they're ready for a conversation. Hope that's the, not the worst advice you've ever heard in your life. Yeah, I um, think it was. If it goes wrong, blame Lucy. Blame but ben. thank you for tuning into this week's episode. We appreciate all the feedback, the responses, the comments. So please continue to do so. Make sure that you'll be watching on YouTube. You subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of future episodes. Same with Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We love le- le- we love leaving reviews. We love reading your reviews and what you think about the podcast. As always, keep sharing it. I will see you next week's episode. Bye, guys. Bye.